Today's Sunday and we're here at work because we have a really cool project on our hands. Today we're gonna to be ceramic coating an RV and that's something we really enjoy doing because ceramic coatings, that's our specialty here at the shop. And I started my business out in Arizona. Over there, everybody has RVs. So this is really, in a sense, sentimental for me. I'm super excited to do this because we have a truly fantastic coating that's gonna be going on it and a variety of new products that just really make every aspect of this detail 100%. And I'm gonna share that with you guys right here in the moment. Starting off, actually, let's start with the wash process, right? Since that's step one. Pro Foam Wash. This soap is amazing. It's the perfect foam for actually like spreading on the vehicle and sticking to it. It's not the thin suds. So this is a high foaming soap, it's pH balanced, and it's biodegradable. So if you can use it on your boats, you can use it on your Vs, you can use it on your car. Great soap to have. Next is the Decon. We got iron off and we have clay. We're gonna be running this across the whole RV. It's a 21 foot um, escape. It's brand new. So honestly, the Decon isn't gonna be the in a sense, most important step, right? It, it definitely is a step that we have to go through. Now, what we're gonna do as far as the polishing goes, and that's this one ceramic final polish. It's pretty much the polish that we use as a very universal product. And uh, the best part for us is since we're gonna be coating this and it's a white RV, there's a chance that there's gonna be a little residue here or there that we're gonna miss, right? Happens. This is the perfect product for that because it's very low on the residue level and very easy to take off. And if we do need to take anything off, we're gonna use Surface Clean, which I'll show you guys what that is. That's this product right here, Surface Clean. It's a great wax and oil remover. So once you're done with any of the uh, polishing or compounding stages, this is what you wanna use to really clean that panel. Um, so obviously you can apply your ceramic coatings. So that's a plus. And then the holy grail, our Extreme Nano Coat. This coating is fantastic. We use it on boats, we use it on RVs, and we use it on cars. Extremely diverse coating and extremely hydrophobic. I mean, the, the beating that we're about to see on this RV is next level. And that's what we've been using on all the other RVs we've done and the clients have loved it. So this is the perfect coating for that. And in particular, this client here opted in for two layers of coating. So that's gonna be fun. He's gonna have extreme hydrophobic protection for a very long time. But on top of that, he does obviously get it done through Minty. And through Minty, you have a lifetime warranty. Don't even worry about it, You got, we got you covered. This client came in, he's from Canada. He's in Vero Beach, he does a lot of traveling, likes going to the beach, and he's used ceramic coatings before on his previous vehicles. So he knows how easy that is for him to maintain and keep up with. So that being said, he wants to kind of transition that ease of maintenance to his RVs, which if you've owned an RV before, you know how hard it can be to maintain it. So this is gonna make his life that much easier, and that's what we're here for, to make your jobs and lives that much easier. Stay tuned for a new video, RV detail, with a five-year ceramic coating. This RV needs to get washed properly. It's been traveling and we're about to ceramic coat it. So we need to go through the full wash process from top to bottom, wheels, all of the different components you're seeing here and make sure they're ready to get ceramic coated uh, as well as get polished. Let's go through that wash process. First, we're gonna start off with the wheels. And these wheels are brand new, so we don't need to do any sort of deep cleaning to them. So first on the list for the clean is the Pro Foam Wash. And as I mentioned, these wheels are brand new, so I don't need to do any sort of harsh cleaning. We can get out our brushes, and we also want to get DuraClean. So DuraClean is going to be for the rubber on the tires. Go ahead and miss that. And today we have a really cool day, so I'm not too worried about watching the products dry on the surfaces. But keep that in mind for those hot summers. But yeah, so have that start breaking everything down. Get the rubber's back here, and that'll be it for that. So we wanna get our brush and just start working that in. It's literally brand new, guys. This vehicle has never even been to any sort of traveling or done any sort of traveling, we're not really, like I said, doing any sort of deep cleaning on them, but we do want to take off the dirt and grime. So get a little bit in there, in there. <clears throat> and of course, we're gonna be prepping those wheels later to put a coating on them. One more here, get the tires. And DuraClean is a great product for the tires. As I'm spraying this on, I can see the chemicals themselves start breaking everything down before I'm hitting it with the brush. And that's exactly what you want. So it's less uh, strain on you having to really scrub and get in there. But at the same time, it cleans on a deeper level. And we always use our 50-50 blend because the product is a full strength product. But we use it more on our maintenance or day-to-day -day, uh, jobs. 
and so we want to make it easy for ourselves. All right, so that's clean. Now we go to the other side and repeat the process. Profoam Wash is the product that we use. This is the perfect suds. It does the cleaning it needs to. So that being said, this is a, a product that we use during the contact wash and the pre-wash. And this is the pre-wash. So now we set a two minute timer and wait. Two minutes are up, and now we're just gonna be knocking off all the uh, foam. In a lot of parts, you'll notice that there's little kind of fine dust, and when you use the uh, pre-wash process, it really helps as far as knocking that top layer off, and then when you hit the contact wash, you're less likely to put more damages into the vehicle. So I like to say it does like a softening process to the dirt and grime that guys so let's get to the fun part now we're gonna be doing a little bit of clay bar decon just gonna do a quick little clay bar decon here to really clean up anything that could be on the surface because we're about to do a nice little polish and when this vehicle was out in the Sun it honestly didn't look like there was much going on but I'm sure that you guys can see from the light there there are a couple of swirl marks and there are a couple marks in the paint so let's see how much we can get with that on a one-step polish here. And that's what this customer selected for their package, just a one-step polish. But being this is new, shouldn't be an issue. And I'm trying to think of here, what would be the best pad combination whenever we do get to the polishing stage? And I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think I might try a little section with a microfiber, see what kind of result I get with that. Or I got some brand new blue pads. Maybe we'd be able to do a little foam with the... Uh... I was originally thinking ceramic final polish for this one step, but maybe we'll jump into a medium, give a little bit more cut, just now that I'm seeing all these marks. And it looks like this vehicle was previously maybe buzzed in some way just because of some kind of imperfections I'm seeing in the little gloss level here there's some areas that are glossier than others some areas have different swirl marks um, and that's kind of telling me that somebody possibly went in there already we're gonna have to see what we have to do to bring more uniformity to that and take away from like I said these <clears throat> different levels of swirls and scratches and different marks uh, paint defects is what we like to call it but when we say paint defects, obviously don't, we don't mean like actual defects. There's no chips of that nature, but it is a defect from the detailer's perspective as far as the swirl marks or those marks in general that we're going to have to correct. Thank God this RV isn't, you know, 10 foot tall or we're going to have to get on a ladder and really get crazy with it. I can reach just about every part here. So that's a blessing because we did a big RV just the other day and God, that was crazy. We uh, a lot of up and down. And that's not something you want to do. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Especially if you're solo. Man, that's crazy. But luckily we had a little team of three that day. So we were able to knock out that RV pretty well. And we got a really nice five-star Google review. So that was cool. And uh, speaking of Google review, so this client here reached out to us. He was just inquiring about getting his uh, new RV ceramic coated and wanted to get an, an idea of what we do, how we do it. So I sent him exactly that. 
We sent him pictures and videos of previous coatings that we've done. As you guys know, we make videos of the work that we do and how we do it and show the steps. So it was a couple of videos that I had some work like that. Sent that over to him. And this was all prompt, you know? Customer reached out on one of our forms. Got that on my email. I checked my email a couple times a day. As soon as I checked it and I saw it, reached out to him. I think it was not even a week after, a couple days actually. And, uh, and we closed the deal. So, you know, kind of what that tells me is if I would have waited, let's say this client contacted us on a you know Monday and I didn't wait until Wednesday, let's say to reach out or communicate, could have lost the client. Be prompt, be on time, and you know, be eager to to send information, to answer questions. Clients are the kind of the same thing with us, you know. They they want to know, they want to know what they're getting, how they're getting it, what they're doing, because there's a lot of things out there in the market, you know. You might go one place and you'll read ceramic coating, and it sounds like it's the answer, right? Oh, ceramic coating, this, 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 and that. And then you go to find out they just sprayed some wax on your car, and now you just spent a ton of money on wax. Yeah, that happens. So I'm happy this client asked a lot of questions, reached out, was really trying to, you know communicate because this is a higher ticket job and i know if i was spending this kind of money on coating and cleaning and getting my rv taken care of i would want to know where my money is being spent how it's being spent does that person truly know what they're doing do they have the experience to make that happen because like i said they might spray some spray wax on your stuff and <laughs> <laughs> and then that's what you get, some spray wax, that's it. Good luck going back there. I had a client recently who said she tried to go back to somebody that said they gave her a ceramic job. Go to find out the guy doesn't even exist anymore. So that's how it is. Clay bar is complete, but now we have all these like little streaks all over it. So we made a little mix. This is 99 proof. About 25% and then the rest is water. So spray a little bit of that on the panels and just wipe it off. And this will just kind of knock off this little residue that the clay bar left behind. Any little contamination that the clay bar took off of the panels here and leaves us with a fresh slate to do our coatings. So nothing too crazy, just a little 99 proof with water. And here you can see that we did the panels and we also did the glass. So go ahead and hit the glass as well. Okay, all right. Work your way around the whole vehicle like that. So guys, these are the marks that I'm referring to. See where the light's hitting here? All of this is just residue from the clay bar. When we look a little further, here are the imperfections that I'm mentioning. It's, it's clean already here. And as I'm moving now, see all those imperfections right there? Not showing it too much. There you kind of see it a lot in that corner. There's some more, some Huey. So it's got Mari, it's got Huey, it's got all kinds of things going on. All right guys, so I left this panel here to show you guys what that looks like from the clay bar. So it's just a little bit of leftover residue that we gotta wipe down. And that's where we use that alcohol spray, as I mentioned, to clean that up. But once it's clean, that allows us to see what's really going on in the paint. You see kind of discoloration, blotchiness, some swirl marks. Over here, he's got a bunch more defects. And it's just inconsistency. And that, in turn, kind of diminishes the shine of the gloss level of the coat. So if we can fix that and clear that up, your color is going to shine more. You're going to have more brilliance in the color, more pop. And then on top of that, we coat it. All right. <clears throat> so let's figure out what pad combination we're going to use to give this the best outcome. And I can 100% tell that they used the rotary at some point in time, just based on the uh, marks that I'm seeing here because the DA, a rotary, and a force rotation all cause different patterns into the paint. And so if it looks like a perfect circle and it's just kind of scuffs, but in a circular motion, those are from a rotary. So somebody used a pad here at one point. So let's do it correctly. And the pad I wanna to try to use today that I think is gonna give me the result is this one here. So it's a microfiber pad, but it's also a foam pad and it's a orange foam. So it's like a medium cut with a microfiber. And since I'm doing a one step, I think that this should give me the desired result. My uh, other option was a regular microfiber that has a little bit of a denser foam. And then we also just got in the black foam with the microfiber, which would be in my thought process, the lightest form of microfiber and foam combination. But let's try the medium. On top of that combination, we either have one step compound, ceramic final polish, or medium cut. One of these three will be the answer, is what my thought is telling me. Sometimes you might even have to use a combination of these. Like if you feel that your ceramic final polish needs a little bit more oomph, throw a dab of some compound in there and that's the oomph that you're missing. Same thing goes for the uh, medium cut. So since I'm starting with a medium, 
I'm gonna try with a medium. And let's see if medium and medium can do the trick. I'm gonna throw, whoa, buddy. Okay, got oh, that shit everywhere. Nice, just throwing my new shorts, awesome. Okay, so let's look at the section. I'm just gonna do a small little one here. Let me see what type of imperfections I see. So this has that little rotary spin that I'm seeing. Let's see if we can do this little section. And what we got out of it. Put our speed at four and a half. Nice, let's put, let's plug in our machine, right Adam? Okay, problem fixed. Machine plugged in. Let's go to our section here. Diggity dog, that shit looks fantastic. Nailed that one. So I'm looking at it here and it's got about, I would say 75% correction level to what it was. Uh, all the little scuffs from the rotary gone. I'm seeing a little kind of scratch here and there, but very unnoticeable. Uh, so as a whole, 75% better because down here is how it was before and I can still see the uh, swirl mark from I said the rotary and there's a lot more little micro scratches and all that so this is a great outcome now we can do another little piece and test it maybe with a compound and see if we get a little bit better thing to me that sometimes happens is we'll use something a bit more aggressive like step one and we're gonna get the cut that we want but not the clarity that we want and then that's gonna push you to have to do a second step so you kind of want to find the perfect balance between the cut level and the polish level. So that being said, let's air out the pad. So what you could also do too, if you want a little polish in there, is you could do three of compound and you could throw a one of ceramic final and that might give you a little clarity too. So matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump to do this bottom slab. So then I can compare them right there side by side. I'm not gonna lie, I think this combination is probably the answer, but let's find out. Okay, so if I had to put my money on it, I would go with three dabs of step one and the ceramic final polish, because what I'm seeing is there's a hue or a little shade difference between here and here, which are the two spots I did. And when you're looking at the top half, a little, a slight bit hazy for some reason right in this area yeah i can kind of tell that there's a different cut level so i think that one step did just enough cut to clarity ratio i'm not gonna lie i think the medium cut can't decide which one i love more they're fairly similar fairly similar outcome i'm getting both the correction level i want and the clarity i want so I guess this comes down to a bit of a business question. Do I have more step one? Do I have more medium cut? I have both. <laughs> but in a case like that, that's probably my next move is to determine if they're both giving me the outcome that I want, which one is gonna be more beneficial to the business? Um, which one is more cost efficient? Which one is it easier for me to work with? And they both have very similar properties as far as the cut to polish ratio and I think the ceramic final polish kind of helped this bottom piece get a little bit more clarity out of it. Yeah, they're both giving me the exact same. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead with the step one and the ceramic final polish. Is that my final answer? Who knows? Who knows? Scratch that. Let's just make it simple on ourselves. So medium cut is the one that we're gonna stick with. Uh, putting two dabs of compound with one dab of ceramic final polish sounds cool and all, but I changed my mind. So let's clean this pad and get to polishing.
So on that last scene, you guys had Mike polishing the windows. And that's the process we do right before we do any of the coating. So we did ceramic final polish on the windows, give it just enough polish. It cleaned up anything, if there was anything, as I mentioned, it's a brand new RV. It got it prepped for us. So we also did a surface clean uh, as well as a prep. And surface clean is a great product for removing any sort of waxes or oils. If there is any residue left, that took it right off. And behind me here, we have Mike applying now the Extreme Nano Coat. So let me take it a little closer for you guys to see. Perfect. So we're almost running out. Uh, why? Because we're doing a two layer on this RV. So the first layer is our base layer. And with Nano Extreme, the reason we like to use it on RVs is because it works with a variety of different uh, surfaces. In particular, the RVs, they're obviously very large. And you want a coating that is, well, from the perspective, obviously, of the detailer, you want a coating that has the ability to stay on the surface for an extended period of time so you can work it fairly easily. Some coatings dry a bit quicker than others. And so this one has a very long dry time, makes it very easy for the detailer to apply uh, and obviously remove. And in particular, if you're looking at the color of the RV, whites are usually more difficult when you're applying ceramic coatings. So this gives him a little bit more luxury to be able to move around, make sure he removes all of the excess coating and obviously doesn't leave any high spots. So anytime that we're doing the coatings, uh, if you look here at the surface, we have it sectioned off and we do this technique, this technique also on boats, so large vehicles. And this allows us to work in section by section uh, in an orderly fashion and not to leave any high spots for the area before to kind of keep ourselves in track of where we're at so we don't leave something behind. And that's a process that he's doing right now. We just finished up this first portion here. We did all the way around the window. We're gonna be getting the window later. And then following that, we go ahead and wipe it all down. Obviously, we use the same technique as we do with cars. So you wanna fold your rag, create eight different spots. And so you'll wipe down one entire area with one side. Go ahead and flip it and use the second half. Sometimes you might even need to do a third half if your coating is a bit stickier but as i mentioned this coating is fantastic for this type of process let's get to it if ever when you go to do it and you're wiping it and you see that this doesn't come off just grab it wet again and kind of keep it in that area a little bit the solvents that are in the liquid will start breaking down the previous coating i don't think it's going to happen with this one but just so you know if you ever need it now we put the second layer of extreme nano coat Earlier, you guys saw that I had Mike out here doing the first layer, and now I just did my second layer right here, and that felt good. And so you guys might be asking, Adam, why are we putting a second layer on the RV? And you already did the first layer. Isn't the first layer sufficient? It can be, yes, but you have to look at the type of vehicle that we're uh, obviously coding right now. And this vehicle is gonna be out to the elements. It might not have all of the available products to help it in the future. It might not have detailers nearby. So just to make it easier and to give the client more durability and longevity, we went ahead and put a second layer. Anytime you put a second layer, you are obviously strengthening the coating, enhancing all of its features. This coating is already fantastic when it comes to RV RVs. Very, very durable. Uh, I've had clients that do regular travels throughout the year and they bring it to me once a year. All the side panels, the rear panels are fantastic. If we have to do any maintenance, it's usually just on the front end. So we're extremely happy using this product on the RV. That's from the client's perspective. Now from the detailer's perspective, let me show you guys how easy it is to coat it easily a four by four section here with ease. So grab the coating, drip a line down the middle. There's probably eight droplets. So what I did here, you'll see that I taped off my edges and that's the box that I'm gonna be working with because this is obviously a harder color to see the coating. Better if you keep yourself organized. So that being said, I'm gonna put a line down the middle, the area I'm working on. Now move this tape down, move this tape down. And you guys can see that I'm pretty comfortable with this product being across the panel here, not really worried about dry time. This product is a very good stretch to it. So from the detailer's perspective, this is the coating you want when it comes to an application like this. You wanna have the luxury of time because you might be having to go up and down as you're seeing here, me with this ladder. There might be windows that you need to work around. There might be some sort of something as an obstacle in your way. And so when you have the ability to stretch the coating and not worry about it, it helps. It helps a whole lot. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and coat everything, even these little plastic components. So I can feel the coating underneath me, it's grabby. And that's just how this coating feels in the beginning. And then it's when all the hydrophobicness kicks in later, which this coating is phenomenal, phenomenal. It's actually even impressive when you see it a year, a year and a half, two years down the road. So I went ahead and I filled that in. Can I notice anything? 
very, very minimal. A little bit of an extra shine right now because obviously it's, it's high. And so now I'm gonna be lowering it down or leveling it out. And this is where the feel comes in. So right now there's no coating here. As I swipe into where the coating is, I can feel it grabbing the towel. And I know that I'm taking off or leveling out the first layer. And so like I've always done with vehicles or cars, I should say, we go ahead and polish with one side of the towel or buff it out. And with this coating here, this first buff takes off just about everything. And I can feel where the coating ends here. Okay, so that full pass is over, flip it over, do the same thing. And you'll notice this second pass, how much lighter it is on the hand. It's not so grabby. And that's exactly what you want because you're leveling it out and the towel is picking up the residue. And if you want to be extra cautious, go ahead and flip your towel one more time and just do one general pass on everything. I would say if you're always using the, I guess, three-part towel method, you're just about going to get all of the residue off with no problems at all as far as high spots after. Three is the perfect number. A lot of times, such as this one, you're able to get away with even two, but three is pretty great. So now I know that I worked from here to here. Now I continue the same pattern all the way around. And yesterday we did the glass, so it is not necessary to double up on the glass. I guess you can if you'd like to, but we typically don't when it comes to the glass. <coughs> and you can coat all little components here. It's not gonna damage any plastics, any trims. Nothing like that. Uh, even this light here, go ahead and coat that. And that's the good thing with this coating here. It's very, as I mentioned, flexible or universal. You don't have to worry too much with this one. And we're in the Florida sun, Florida heat, Florida humidity. So you guys can have an idea of the temperatures we use or the temperatures we have here. So the products stay pretty well for us. I know if you're in a colder environment or less humidity, it might react a little bit differently. Cure time might be differently. And it's, like I said, it's pretty flexible for us over here. And so with this coating, so if right now, if I'm putting on the second layer and if on a vehicle, we checked it last night, so that really isn't the case here, right? We hope. But if you're looking around uh, as you're putting the second layer and you see a high spot from the previous first layer, don't freak out. Completely fixable. Sometimes actually very easily fixable. You can try the recoating method where you would just get a little bit more coating on your pad and kind of rub it into that area. That might soften it up <clears throat> where it just wipes away. If you've maybe done it like the next day, such as us, then you might have to bring out some ceramic final polish and buff in that area. It all just depends on how long it's been, how much it's cured, because to show you guys a perspective here, listen. That's from yesterday. So we know this coating hardens. It actually turns into little shards of glass. And now I don't know where my little chair is, but I shall use this. And then same thing, I'm gonna use now this tape mark as my guides, and I'm gonna do the bottom halves. And so if you're doing it yourself, this is the process that you do. You'll do one panel, what, uh, dry it. Apply it to one panel, wipe it off. Apply it to one panel, wipe it off. Apply it to one panel, wipe it off. If you happen to be working in a group of two, that's where the project becomes that much easier. So one person will wipe this on while they move on to the next side. Uh, the person's gonna be buffing it off right behind them. So you guys will continuously work this pattern. Works out that much easier when you're working on a large vehicle like this. So as soon as we log off with you guys that's what we'll be doing but if you're solo dolo same process as always apply it down the middle find your area put a line down the middle box it out so i found a high spot guys and i want to show you see it right there yep a couple little fingerprints how high spots happen they are just excess coating that's sitting on the surface. So let me see if I can open this tripod back here. Okay, so here's the area that we're gonna be working on. Just excess coating that is on that area, so it didn't get wiped off. What probably happened is there was probably a little bit of excess coating uh, that got on Mike's glove. And so when he went to go move, it probably just, boom, took the, uh, took the fingerprints right off of his hand. <laughs> and place them over there as a nice little pattern. So as I mentioned, if you want to do a little quick fix, grab ceramic final polish, put a little dab on your rag here, define the area, quick little circular motions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and buff off that area. Okay, and that's gone. So, you guys can see that it was right here. 
it's all going. So those things happen, we know that, and that's how you fix that. And as I've always said, it's the products. Ceramic Final Polish is that product for that quick fix uh, in a scenario like this. Obviously, if the coating was left on there days, whatever it may be, where it was really hardened or if it was a different coating, this might have been a little bit of a trickier process. A couple hours later, this was just enough to uh, take that little top layer off, level it out. And so now what I like to do is probably that area doesn't have the most coating. There's a little coating still left on our pad. Let's go ahead and just fill in that section. And you guys know already that I say it all the time, ceramic final polish doesn't need to be cleaned up after. So it is a fantastic product and we're doing exactly this. No issues. All right, fixed, move on. This is Extreme Nano. This is the coating that we put on the body, right? The two layer coating. Let me show you guys how tough this pad is right now. Extremely hydrophobic. And if this wasn't obviously attached to the microfiber, it would be crystallized. And that's what happens when you apply this, this ceramic coating to the body. Uh, it creates a layer that's gonna be a hydrophobic barrier between any of the environmental debris, environmental whatever. Something like that, bro. <laughs> oh man, something like that, something like that. Just get a little bit of that, get a little bit of this. So guys, you see me use these coatings on a variety of different projects and I'm sure you're wondering where can you find them? What I'm gonna do is in the comments, I'm gonna drop a link to all three of these Endura Coatings website so you guys can check them out yourselves. You can see other videos that they've done on their website and give it a try. Use code MINTY and you're gonna get 15% off on any of these three. They're near the $100 mark. They're all four or five year coatings. Uh, X7 is actually a seven year coating. So these are truly amazing. You should add them to your arsenal. In specific, these two, because they are our bread and butter, these go on a variety of different vehicles and one coat nano is extremely easy to apply. So when you have those jobs that have some trickier uh, attributes, those are the two coatings you wanna use. So check out the comments, guys. It's all there. For this project, we use three different ceramic coatings. Extreme Nano for the body, and this was a two layer. One coat Nano for the rims. Uh, and we also use Nano X7 for the windows. So let's go over that now and do a little hydrophobic test on all of these different coatings. Close look here at the panel. Great water beading. Very easy to take off. And this is why it's easy to maintain. Let's do a little glass test. Yep. Great results there. Very, very hydrophobic. And once again, let's make it easy to maintain. And last but not least, I'm gonna have to have you guys step a little closer. So these wheels are new. They wanna keep them clean. Water just bounces right off. So now all the dirt and grime when he wants to clean is literally one wipe away. I don't know about you guys, but that sold it for me. RV just left, customer was super happy. And like I told you guys before, he already had experience with ceramic coating, so he knows how easy it made his life. And that's what we wanted to go do with that one. I explained to him how we had all the panels double ceramic coated. We talked about the wheels, how those were ceramic coated, and we also talked about the glass. So his ease of maintenance is on a whole nother level now, and all he has to do is enjoy.